I became an Insteon orphan when the company went out of business in April 2022. So I'm on a quest to evaluate different solutions that allow me to keep using my Insteon investment as well as migrate to new technology over time. In my last video, I demonstrated the ISY hub by Universal Devices. It worked great, but unfortunately it requires an Insteon PowerLink modem, which is nearly impossible to find these days. In this video, I'm going to evaluate HomeSeer and its Insteon plugin that communicates with something nearly every Insteon user has, the Insteon hub. That's right, you don't need to trash all your Insteon devices. HomeSeer's Insteon plugin can magically bring your Insteon hub back to life, even though the red status LED will never go green again. It does this by leveraging the built-in credentials that are labeled on the bottom of your hub. You just need to look in your router to determine its IP address. And as a side note, there's been a lot of speculation that you should avoid doing a factory reset on your Insteon hub. Well, I debunked that myth because I purposely did a factory reset on my hub and every other device that I was using in this test. HomeSeer is a home automation platform that's available as a software download or a turnkey physical hub called a home troller. The latest generation of the software is HS4, and it runs on Raspberry Pi, Windows, or Linux. If you don't have a spare Raspberry Pi or an existing Windows or Linux computer that you can leave running all the time, I recommend buying one of their home troller hubs. If you're a Z-Wave user or planning to be one, the Home Troller Pi is a very good value because it comes with a built-in Z-Wave antenna and pre-installed software. For my testing, they sent me a Home Troller Plus, which is a fully functional Windows 10 computer that's faster and has more storage than the Pi version. It has an HDMI output and USB ports so you can connect a monitor, keyboard, and mouse and use it like any other computer. I'm going to be using the same test scenario to evaluate HomeSeer that I used to evaluate all the other post Insteon solutions I'll be looking at. I'll also show some tips and tricks that go beyond my tests at the end of the video. My objective today was to see how well HomeSeer supports the goal of leveraging my Insteon investment while allowing me to migrate to another technology over time. I'll be using a total of 9 devices in my testing. 6 are Insteon and the other 3 are Z-Wave devices. I'll be creating five scenes to show how the devices can be controlled together by a single action. Here's a list of the seven tests that I'll be executing. They represent the minimum functionality that I expect for a hub to be a suitable option for me. I'll also factor in the difficulty of setup and general usability to calculate a final score. So to get started with HomeSeer, the first thing you're going to do is go to find.homeseer.com and that brings up the system finder here and it finds the the uh, whatever software you have running on your local network and it brings you into this page which has a list of all the devices that I have in my home and uh, of course the list the list is pretty big but it allows you to organize them by floor room and category and um, you can rename these floor and room by the way but I only have my devices in one floor of my home so I actually use that for a different purpose so it allows me to just find my Insteon or my Z-Wave devices really quickly. Now the categories are pre-configured, but you can customize them if you need to. The only one that I really use right now is Favorites, and that lets me filter the list to show the devices that I use most often. Test number one is the ability to configure and control the nine devices in my scenario. Now from the device list here, I can manually control any of my devices. For example, this is my hall bulb, it's a Z-Wave bulb. I click on and a moment later you'll see it says on and this icon changes and uh, I can click off and I can also use this slider to dim it if I want to so that is local control of my devices. Test number two is the ability to configure the devices into five scenes. So the Insteon devices in my kitchen are the two keypads. There's one over here that controls my kitchen ceiling lights and there's one on the other side of the refrigerator that controls these island lights. In addition, I have three lamp dimmers controlling each one of these lit banks of cabinets in the kitchen. So I created scenes to have my two keypad dimmers working together. So for example, if I turn on the ceiling lights over here, then on the other keypad over here, button B is lit. So button A turns on those lights, button B controls them from over here. Similarly, 
if I turn on the main button over here, button A, it turns on the island lights. And that also lights button B over here. So if I click button B here, it turns off the island. So regardless of which place I'm in, I can control them like it's a three-way switch. Now the cabinet scene is a more complicated one. I have my three lamp dimmers as well as the C buttons in the same scene. So right now the C button is lit while the cabinets are on. If I press the C button, they all go off. And the cool thing about that is they're all in the same scene and this is the controller. So it happens really fast. It's almost in instantaneous. When I click the button, they change right away. I'm going to go into the Insteon plugin here and you can see there is a device list of all my devices. These are my Insteon devices, I should say. And there's this groups tab. Now a group in Homeseer is the same as a scene in the old Insteon app. Now to create a group, you're going to select the controller of that group, like what's going to kick it off. Or you can have none, which means you're just going to have to do it through software. But let's just say I want to create one that, uh, you know, button F on my island keypad is going to control, you know, this light and it's going to control that light. If I click save changes here, the interface here will write these changes out to these devices so that when button F is clicked, it notifies these other two and they go on instantly. So here you can see my cabinet scene. It says that the controller is my kitchen keypad button C and it has the three lamp dimmers and it also has button C on the island keypad as well as the kitchen keypad, both button C's. So whenever that's pressed, they instantly all go on. Now, so far, those scenes were just Insteon devices. But to test my Z-Wave devices, I have a Z-Wave light bulb in here. I call it my hall lamp. And I also have my wall mote here, which has four buttons on it, four quadrants. And if I click button number one, it turns on that hall lamp. Click it again, and it turns off. Test number three is the ability to control Z-Wave devices from an Insteon device. What Homeseer allows me to create hybrid scenes. So to test that, I actually have button H here on my Insteon device. If I click that on the keypad, it turns on my hall lamp down there. That hall lamp is a Z-Wave bulb. And that is being controlled by an Insteon device. Hybrid scenes are actually created with Homeseer events. Here you can see I have an event called button H on that says if button H turns on, then turn on the hall bulb. Button H off does the opposite by turning the light off. Test number four is the ability to control Insteon from a Z-Wave device. Similarly, I have button number two on the wall mode programmed so that it turns on the ceiling lights. So there I have a Z-Wave device controlling Insteon. I can do it in both directions. To do that, I created a wall mode event called button two on that says if button two changes and becomes on then activate the kitchen scene from the group controller button two off does the opposite test numbers five and six are the ability to have time-based and daylight based schedules here you can see I created three schedule events at 7 a.m. Homeseer turns my cabinet scene group controller on in my dusk event which is 30 minutes before sunset Homeseer turns on my two Z-Wave bulbs and button H on the island keypad. And finally, at 10.30 p.m., Homeseer turns everything off. These automations are not only for my convenience, but they also make my home lived in if I'm away. And last but not least, test 7 is the ability to control my scenes using Alex A voice control. Now, by default, your home seer is completely self-contained within your house. That is, it's not dependent on any cloud servers whatsoever. Now, there are times you might want to set up your device to communicate with the outside world. That would enable you to use the My Home Seer app on your phone, as well as voice control from Google Home or Amazon Echo. So if you do that, you just have to set up a free MyHS account. There's no monthly fees. I enabled the skill on my Amazon Echo, for example. And so I'm going to test my voice control now. Alexa, turn on the kitchen. Alexa, turn on the island. Alexa, 
turn on the cabinets. In my device list, you can see this little cloud icon with a microphone. This indicates that I've selected a device for voice activation. In the device properties, I set the voice command to whatever I want. So you can see HomeSeer passed all my tests and it's definitely a good contender that allows me to operate my Insteon devices as I slowly move towards Z-Wave or any other technology. So here's my report card for HomeSeer HS4. For functionality, I'm giving it a 10. All my tests passed and they worked great. In addition, I went a little bit beyond my tests and I will show that in the bonus tips and tricks at the end of the video. For ease of use, I gave it a nine. It's not seamless. There is a learning curve. You have to look for things in different places, especially with the Insteon plugin. I always like to ask myself, could my family take care of this if I wasn't around to do it? Mm, at this point, they really need me to support it. For the technology, I'm giving it a 10. It's really easy to add plugins. It's got a great responsive web interface that works on mobile as well as computers. And that home troller is rock solid and uses the latest version of Windows. For the company, I gave it a 10. Although it's not a public company, they've been in business for 23 years. Not only do they make their own software, but they also have these home troller devices as well as smart devices. So it's really one-stop shopping for a smart home. And they are technology agnostic, so I'm not worried about whatever standards change over time and what new technology comes out 10 years from now. I know it'll work with Homeseer. For cost, I give it a 9. It's not free, but it's competitively priced compared to other solutions. Plus, there's no fees for voice integrations, and it works with IFT. So overall, that's 48 points out of 50, or a score of 96%, which is an A plus in my book. If you're a Homeseer user, what do you think of my scoring? And if you're not a Homeseer user, what do you think of the product? And if you're using something else, I want to know that too. In any case, leave me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Okay, now it's time for some bonus content with the stuff I learned along the way. So this is what it looks like when I press button C. They go on instantaneous. Now remember, button C is actually the controller for the cabinet scene. So that's expected to be fast. They're like instant. Now button E. Now button E triggers a home seer event that then sends an on signal to the group controller. So after a slight delay, they all go on together at the same time. And button D. That one takes the longest amount of time. Now for button D, when that's activated, I send an on signal to each one of these devices individually. I was really surprised about the delay to trigger each one of these devices in succession. So I tried another test just to see if it was the communication with the Insteon devices or if it was actually just home sears inefficiencies. I created another event that is triggered by wall mode button four and when that happens, it turns each one of the Z-Wave bulbs on. Now here I programmed the wall mode button four to turn on both of these Z-Wave devices one after the other. So here we go. No delay whatsoever. They both go on exactly the same time. So this delay was clearly caused by the inefficiencies of sending commands over Insteon. The most efficient way to communicate with your Insteon devices continues to be Insteon groups. Now there are times after installing a plugin or doing an update that sometimes you have to restart the software. And I check through the setup and tools and there's no button anywhere in the UI to actually restart the system. So I found that you have to create a manual event. So I created a couple of scripts here. The first one I tried was actually testing the speech. Subscribe to Handy Dad TV or fuck off. Well, maybe it's not that nice, but it does test it. And anyway, the other one is restart the system. So what I do then is I actually speak home seer is restarting. And then I execute the command appersand hs dot restart system and only allow one instance of the script to run at a time. So that way um, it does a restart. And then after it's done restarting, home seer naturally announces to the speakers, welcome to home seer. So that's how to restart the system. 
Now using two buttons on the wall mode, I can show you how different things are triggered. I have button one on there, which turns on the light down there, but it also turns on my button H light here so that they're both in sync. But HomeSeer also allows you to link devices directly. So I also linked button number three on here directly with that light down there. So when I click that, it also turns on that light, but it doesn't turn on the button. So you can link device to device. As long as I only want that button to just control that light and nothing else, then that's fine. Otherwise I had to use an event and do it with button number one because that actually turns on multiple things at the same time. Now here I have an Insteon leak detector and this I keep up in my utility room. There are two metal contacts on the bottom and I have a wet paper towel here and this is a really cool event that I trigger here. Leak detected in utility room. Leak detected in utility room. Leak detected in utility room. Now, you can certainly set it up to do anything. This is a Bluetooth speaker that is actually uh, connected to the home seer because it's a Windows machine and I just connected the, the Bluetooth device. But that could be connected to anything. And uh, this is really cool because I had it flash the lights three times. Of course, you could get a notification on your phone and whatnot, but now I'm gonna clear it. I just dried the contacts and I'm just gonna press the button real quick. Leak cleared in utility room. And so you can see, you can have these things all over your house too. And whether it be <laughs> an Insteon device or a Z-Wave device or any other kind of leak sensor, it's got that kind of capability that you can create. The rules are only limited by your imagination. If you are a DIY video creator struggling to find an audience, join Handy Dad TV and get instant access to an established audience that will provide more views and income than you're getting on your own. Just go to handydad.tv join for more information.